Some 1,400 industry professionals, so cheesemakers, buyers, retailers, your local cheese shop owner, um, your large grocery store, they're, they're all here and they're all looking for the best and greatest new cheeses in America. This is the American Cheese Society annual meeting. It is definitely the definitive meeting of the year where all of the artisan and large commercial makers come together uh, under one roof for three and a half days of education, networking, cheese tasting, with charcuterie and wines, etc. The American Cheese Society, we're a nonprofit organization. We represent American artisan, farmstead, and specialty cheesemakers. This event is at our annual competition and conference, which is being held in Pittsburgh, Meet the Cheesemaker. And it is just in its simplest form what it says. You are able to walk around the room and you're not meeting a marketing person or salesperson from a company. You're meeting the person who made that cheese. This is uh, from October. Have you had this one? The Atika sheep and goat blend. We specialize in several types of cheese, but primarily soft, ripened, roviola style goat and sheep milk farmstead cheeses. We're demonstrating our cheeses today at Tamales Farmstead Creamery. We're a small family-owned uh, farmstead operation 60 miles north of the Golden Gate in gorgeous West Marin, California. One of our most popular cheeses is a triple milk, a goat, sheep, and cow, Robiola style blend. It's a crazy thing that the French would throw you out of their country because they never mix the milk. So it has a ton, a ton of butter fat. It's better for you and better tasting than a triple creme because it's not just cream. It's just the 7.5% butterfat of the sheep, the 6% butterfat of the Jersey cows, and the 4% butterfat of the goats. I'm Mike Matuszewski. I'm a master cheesemaker for Sartori Cheese. So this is Espresso Bellavitano. It starts with our Bellavitano Gold. So the inside, you can see it's golden. What its primary flavor notes are it's fruity and it's sweet. This one here is balsamic. We're using a balsamic that's typically about six years old. The Bellavitanos are magically take flavors. I would always describe them as a fruity parmesan. Everything we do is real, real espresso, real balsamic vinegar, real wine that you could drink every day. Our main cheese that we manufacture is ricotta cheese, and that's what we built the brand off of, very well known in the Pittsburgh area. Ricotta cheese is one of the easiest cheeses you can make. It's made with milk, vinegar, and salt. Three ingredients, very simple. The first one is part skim little bit lower, lower in fat. We're using skim milk instead of whole milk. In the middle, we have impastata ricotta, which is ricotta cheese with additional butter fat added. Lower moisture, higher butter fat, smooth texture versus a curd texture. And then on the far side here, we have whole milk ricotta. Same as the part skim, but made with whole milk instead of skim milk. I'm always excited to see people that are making raw milk cheeses. It's, it's, it's a little bit, well, actually it's not a little bit. It's a, it's a much harder uh, cheese to produce in the U.S. where there's a lot more stringent uh, rules and laws that you have to abide by in order to get to work with raw milk. Jersey cow milk, and then it's got the, the blue mold, the penicillium rocaforti, and uh, it's got a blend of cultures that are typically used, you know, with gorgonzola and salt. And that's it. It is a lot harder to make cheese with raw milk. You know, when you pasteurize, you kill all the bacteria, whether good or bad. So that means that uh, your final product, is, you have more control of your final product instead of having those naturally occurring bacteria that are, might produce bad or good flavors. You don't know. So that's kind of, kind of the deal with raw milk cheese. If you were just a regular cheese lover, the Festival of Cheese is our big public event. So all of that cheese that was judged by our experts in our competition, some 2,000 cheeses, they're going to be on display and it's open to the public. So you will have a chance to do your best to try all 2,000 cheeses. And in addition to that, we have specialty food producers around the room who will also be sampling their product. This one is our Rojizo Chorizo. Uh, it's made with paprika, chipotle, and cayenne. We're here with Smoking Goose Meadery. We're a charcuterie company out of Indianapolis, Indiana. So we do a range of uh, smoked and cured meats. We don't use any added nitrates or nitrites, so that means all we use is celery juice and sea salt. That is Delaware Fireball. That's one of our uh, signature salamis. It's a crepinette style. You can actually see the whole pieces right there. 
So it's got Calabrian chili peppers in it, and then we cold smoke it. It's my favorite, so I like to talk about it. <laughs> this is called piccata. Um, yeah, so what it looks like is that it's a, a leaf wrapped bloomy rind cheese. So some of the flavors from the cheese, maybe they'll be dipped in something, will kind of get into the paste. So they'll kind of melt the top here, and you take a cracker and you scoop it. And you try. Very good. Cheese making dates back thousands and thousands and thousands of years. And artisan cheese making in the US is like less than 100 years old. So to come in, you know, forge that industry here the way they are, I mean, it's all for the greater good and it's this common, the common pushing the boulder basically. In this room, really, some of these cheeses that are being shared often for the first time, they're going to end up in grocery stores, they're going to end up at your local restaurant. Um, so it's kind of an exciting place to see that energy and enthusiasm for cheese.